Hey, my name is Raj Shah, and before I begin, I'd like to quickly thank my mentors, Santiago Jaramillo and Beth McCary, as well as fellow undergraduate researcher Bridget Deck for their support in this project. Motivation. How does the brain process sounds? In order to understand this, we have a powerful tool known as two-photon calcium imaging that allows us to measure the activity of hundreds of individual neurons simultaneously. In figure one, you can see that this is done in vivo, which means so while the mouse is awake and being presented with sounds, we're able to image the neurons that are responsible for sound processing. Methods. In order for the microscope to have optical access to the auditory cortex, which is the region of the brain we are studying, we replace the piece of skull that is above the cortex with a glass window, as you can see in figure two. When the two photon microscope is placed above this window, now the microscope has direct visual access to the auditory cortex. How does this type of imaging actually measure the activity of neurons? Well, since the activity of neurons is directly correlated with the level of calcium in the cell, we can use a fluorescent calcium sensor known as GCAMP that allows us to visualize this activity in combination with the two photon microscope. Surgery. In order to implant this glass window above the auditory cortex, surgical intervention is required. In figure three, we can see a basic sketch of the surgical protocol. So this is while the mouse is anesthetized. So we start by removing the scalp so the skull is exposed. Then we mark the coordinates of the window using a drill above the auditory cortex. Then replace that piece of skull with a three millimeter glass window. We faced many challenges with surgery, one of the main ones being with the auditory cortex being in the lateral aspect of the brain. This region is not easily accessible due to the surrounding large muscles and arteries around the ears. So a partial dissection of temporal muscle was performed that allowed an increase in access without having to damage surrounding structures. Due to inflammation and pain caused by the invasiveness of surgery, the drug protocol was also modified to increase survival rates. In figure four, you can see when a cranial window is successfully implanted, we're able to see the arteries in the brain directly through the cranial window. Imaging. When the mouse is head fixed on the wheel, in figure five, we can see that once the set microscope is set up above the cranial window, the mouse is able to move while we are still able to image. In figure six, we can see that as the fluorescence of neurons increases, this is related to an increase in calcium in those cells, and since this is a reliable indicator of the neural activity, we're able to measure the activity as well as classify and map neurons in the auditory cortex using GCAMP in combination with the two-photon calcium imaging. Results. By overcoming the challenges of surgery, we are able to successfully implant a cranial window over the auditory cortex, which has allowed us to use two-photon calcium imaging to measure the activity of these neurons and the auditory cortex while the mouse is awake. Future directions. So we want to measure the activity of neurons in the auditory cortex while the mouse is being presented with changes in sound. So when the mouse is set up on the microscope and wheel, in figure seven, we can see that when we create a task that involves a mouse to process changes in sound, we can use the data from the calcium imaging to see if our ability to detect changes in sound is dependent on the activation of neurons in the auditory cortex. This will better allow us to understand how the brain processes sounds. Acknowledgements. I'd like to thank the Haramio lab members, as well as the Terrestrial Animal Care Services and the Institute of Neuroscience for all their support. Thank you for your time.